His third film captures memories of famous matches played at the Bouvin Crescent and other key moments in the stadium's history. We catch up with lifelong supporters and the Sporting Memories group, as well as photographer Tony Cole, whose new book records scenes from the final days of a traditional English football ground. First time and the last time I ever sat in the main stand with the posh people, um, and my dad took me to the first game. The only reason we sat in the main stand was because we had a distinguished guest with us who was a high-ranking official from the Iraqi Railways who had never seen a football match in his life. And my dad spent the whole 90 minutes trying to explain the rules of football very badly to our Iraqi friend who did nothing but laugh throughout the game. Most of this is really, it's 1954-55, right. when York City reached the semi-final of the <coughs> FA Cup um, as a third division team. Wow. Um, and they, I think again it's a record, they actually drew the semi-final at uh, Hillsborough uh, and went to a replay at Sunderland. Yeah. And I don't think any other club from that our level of football yeah. have actually reached a semi-final at the replay. Fond are much clearer memories of 1955, a miserable, snowy, frosty day when we beat Spurs 3-1. Special day in many, many ways. And it got closer and closer to kick-off. And the crowds were building. And well before kick-off, I mean, 20 minutes before kick-off, the crowd began to sway and surge forward. And I've never experienced anything like this in my life. Anyway, the game kicked off, and not much more than 15 minutes after kickoff, there was a huge surge, and the fence gave way. It was delight for me because they, the police just funneled several hundred people through the broken fence, and I watched the game from the touchline and had a first hand view, unimpeded view of Norman Wilkinson's two goals, and wonderful. I can remember every moment of it. Teammate Bill Hughes takes over. A centre to Wilkinson, and there's the equaliser. A superb header by Wilkinson. York with Wilkinson again in action, come back for another. Fenton has two shots at goal, and the second smacks home. York, the little team with a big heart, has taken the lead. Goes to centre to Wilkinson. A terrific slam, and York City have clinched the match. 3-1 is the final score. Another feature of games, five minutes before the end, there would be a flag lowering ceremony. That's right. The flag was in the, um, well, looking at the pitch from the pop stand, it was more or less in the corner at the Grosvenor Road end. And it was the York City flag, special flag, club flag, and it came down five minutes before the end of the game. And more or less at the same time, they opened the exits, I think 15 minutes before the end of the game. So people could watch the last 15 minutes for free if they wanted. That famous victory in the last couple of minutes, oh, was that penalty. Yeah. Keith, the Keith yeah. in there, took the penalty at that yeah. end. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, the, the crowd just went absolutely wild after the, after the, uh, the, the ball was in the net. Oh, it, it, it went mad when Hoach scored. Yeah, yes. Hoach had scored, yeah. yeah. So I thought that, um, you know, I take the odd photograph. So um, for the last couple of years, I've been taking photographs in and around the ground and uh, just trying to record a little bit of it. It always struck me that the fans are just the blurry um, background to, uh, to, the, you know, to, the, to the players. And, yes. and I wanted to kind of put them to the, to the front of it and also the ground as well, you know, because it and is- you, And you've got a book, I understand, coming out. A uh, book called Home End. Um, with a, a subtitle of scenes from the final days of a traditional English football ground, and I think it's important that that's you know that's that's really what this is. I think it is it's a good you know archetype of um, you know between the wars, working class structure built in the community that kind of um, that you know the original support bits of this ground were, were funded by the fans, you know paid for by subscription like the popular stand, mm. and you know to see it. You know, in its, you know, in its the club in its rightful place, full of you know, full of supporters, it means a lot to people, yeah. and I, I, I don't like the idea of it disappearing.
If you have memories to share of Boovham Crescent or ideas about how the site should be redeveloped, please contact Historic England.